Okay, uh, I think we might as well um, start. There might be some late arrivals who join us. Bestlin, please stand up. So, first of all, um, former FIDE World Champion, and he was a fantastic uh, uh, teacher. We had a seminar that were for three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and uh, Bestlin, you were fantastic. And uh, thank you very much for that. And also for being here tonight and offering us what I'm sure is going to be a fantastic lecture and um, then playing in the Masters, uh, for which we wish you the best of luck. And uh, Veslin Topalov. Okay. Uh, good evening. I, today I chose um, to show the, you know, the theoretical, what we call theoretical duel between me and Anand between years 2005-2008. The, all the games were from the in the, played in the Queen's Indian, I was always white. So what happens more or less is that, for example, imagine you have a, you play in the weekends in your chess club in your host city against some opponent, and then you play games, some certain uh, openings, and then during the weeks you try to improve, and then next week you you play again. And this is more or less what is happening in top events that. Uh, uh, I met Anand uh, with the white pieces in 15 years ago, in 2005. We first played in uh, Vaikanze, what is now Tata, in January. Then we played, uh, I think first it was uh, in February, or Mar February was Linares, then it was Monte Carlo, and finally in May, Sofia. So, uh, and so if probably you, you see that many Many times on top level there are many many draws and uh, sometimes people complain uh, openings are boring and the games are boring and one of the reasons is that in these all uh, unrefutable openings and classical openings they, they will stand forever and the idea is that white have mainly they are limited they, there are not so many good ideas and uh, at some point, if you play, you can't show good idea every week, you know, in certain opening. And that is the reason uh, sometimes they just uh, repeat same opening, you know, uh, once and again in a period of uh, a month or two. And uh, nothing really is happening with some small improvements. Okay, so I will start with um, our first game. Uh, the one I played uh, between me and Anand in Sofia in, in May. It was played in May, and uh, before that I tried always, uh, both in Vaikanze and in Linares, I played, uh, tried first move E4. Um, I don't look at the comments of this guy, Tjomkin. Uh, I just uh, need the moves. Uh, and, and both in Vaikanze and Linares I tried um, uh, E4 and uh, Anand played the Petrov defense and uh, in Vaik Black was completely fine, just a normal quick draw, nothing really happened and then I was pressing in, in, in the Petrov in Linares, I was very close to winning but then um, Monaco I tried something else, it was probably a blindfold game but the thing is that uh, we played in the sixth round in Sofia, and then I just lost uh, the, the, the round before to Ponomario. By the way, I recommend uh, this game because uh, there, are, there are events that I will always remember. For example, uh, the first time I played Linares, it was 1994, and that's the famous Linares when Karpov, oh, oh, he beat us us, like he made plus 9 I think, 11 out of uh, 13 games, I will always remember that tournament, I will always remember the one in Las Palmas de Gran Canaria in 1996, I think it's probably the strongest event in the last 30 years or something, you know, it was Kasparov, Anand was second, I shared third with Kramnik, fifth and sixth was even Ivanchuk and Karpov, so it was like Top six ratings, double round robin. I will always remember also Amsterdam, but for personal reasons. And also this one, uh, in Sofia, there were very, very good games. Uh, the one I said already, Ponomaryov, he beat me. It was, I would say, a brilliant game. He, he, I, will, I recommend everyone to, to see it. And, also, and 
And the second, the next game after this one was the one uh, I, 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 I won against uh, Mickey Adams. But in fact, I was extremely lucky because he play, played brilliantly and he, ha, he was practically winning. And then he spoiled in the time trouble. And not only spoiled, but he, he finally lost. But it was also a very good game. So, uh, game, this game is the sixth round. Uh, the, I just lost to Ponomaryov and we had a free day, you know? Uh, so I was kind of uh, made, I had like in the first five, round, five rounds four draws and one lost game. So I desperately needed to win because if I, uh, I was running uh, out of white colors, you know, uh, I had to meet uh, in the last three games, seventh, eighth, and ninth round, I had only one more white left. So if I wanted to, to, to show good result, then it was almost desperate to, I was desperate to win. And I, I don't remember Anand's result. He was plus one maybe. So I needed to, to beat him if I, if I wanted to have a good result. So, okay. Uh, so first game in this Queen's Indian, one thing about the King Queen's Indian, obviously it's a, it's a solid opening and, okay, it is very obvious. Uh, what I will say, but it can be avoided by, for example, by two, two, two moves. Knight c3, obviously, and the other way to avoid uh, Queen C Indian is g3. So, of course, it is, there's nothing to be afraid of. Simply, it makes uh, a bit more difficult uh, for those who, those who want to play, to, to, to study the, and to prepare the Queen's Indian. Because you have to also study the, all the Nimso lines and also G3, which is Catalan. Uh, you know, people sometimes they ask me um, about some openings and, okay, it's totally impossible to choose an opening and not to study some concrete lines. For example, I've been thinking that maybe after E4, E5, let's say the Petrov is the simplest way because it, it gives very few options for white. It's simply, you can either you go for Petrov or second move, let's say bishop c2, try to avoid it. But, but if you go, for example, uh, e4, e5, knight c3, knight c6, black has to prepare against the Italian, the Scotch, and of course the Spanish. But I'm not recommending Petro, but simply it's kind of practical th uh, thing. Okay, so knight f3, g3, bishop here. So the idea of the check is to misplace the bishop on b2, on d2, put it on d2, because after b3, obviously, uh, bishop, uh, the natural square could be um, on b2. So first check. This is known. And now knight c3, uh, okay, if in the sec next games we'll also deal with the move bishop g2. And now, okay, the other move, okay, black has two moves, um, castle immediately, or c6. So c6, and now um, take, take bishop b7. So this was more or less what uh, we expected, and the whole, you know, the whole day and uh, uh, the whole night before that round, my uh, second, he plays here, the, here Ivan uh, Ciparinov, he, he was helping me for that tournament then, and he was trying to make it work, the idea we had, uh, against Leko in, my, in uh, like a couple of months uh, before, I won a game on blindfold in, in Monaco, and it was uh, something like, uh, like this. In fact, uh, it was a similar idea, you know, uh, but, in, but, but, um, but in fact it was, uh, I think, uh, completely fine for, for Black, and, and the reason he lost it was obviously not because of uh, the opening. So we kind of expected that Anand might repeat. So he went um, for bishop b7, you know. And now this was the idea that, okay, uh, that would be nice, of course, to play c5, but it's losing a pawn. Otherwise, and it, we couldn't make it work. So for the whole night, um, Chipper uh, was trying to make work uh, this idea, but he, on the, the morning after, 
uh, he said that it, it was nothing, like black was completely fine. So, okay, it is very typical that, uh, for example, I would say in this kind of situations, uh, castling is almost always a bad idea because, uh, let's say, H, inclusion of H6 and H4 doesn't really help. It's not almost never a good idea to take the knight, and white has all this typical stuff, you know, I can long, castle long, and and then bishop attacks on d3 to h7. So it is very typical way to attack. And of course, um, it's also like h6 is uh, inviting white to take, or let's say I can also take on e6, and then bishop h3. But uh, h, it, it is very natural to open with c5, you know? So Chipper, he, in the night he couldn't make it work, but finally, like maybe one hour or two hours before the game, uh, we found this idea, h6. We had some small checks and, for example, uh, uh, calculations with the computer, which was much worse than now, of course, computers. Okay, all these takings are not so good because then uh, somehow I can go like this and then, you know, recover. The, the bishop, and then it's, it goes very quickly, uh, the white's attack. So it, is, it was expected that, uh, for example, these kind of situations were also or h6, h4, and then my next move is already going to c3 attacking on f6 and getting you made. So these are very typical uh, motives for white. So we kind of expected that h6 was the critical, and then that was the idea, and I have to admit that, of course, we, we got really optimistic about this position because it looks like my, I want to give check on uh, e5, and sometimes I also play d6, opening both the d file and the diagonal, and it really looked uh, very dangerous, so we were very optimistic, and I have to say that we stopped and we were not very critical. But over the board, of course, things were not very simple. Uh, Anand uh, closed, he didn't give me, okay, it's very na natural move, you know. You stop d6, you stop knight e5, and, and of course, okay, this is what, of course, we expected, knight h4. And again, it looked like all these takings are not so good because of bishop c3 and many mating threats. Um, so, white wants to play check, queen g6 check and knight f5, then of course I have, uh, I can place my bishop on c4. And he, more or less, um, you know, in this position, uh, Anand, he actually very quick, more or less quickly he reacted. And it's a very logical reaction if you think so. Uh, he simply covers uh, the the um, f5 square, so it's, black doesn't allow um, white knight to go to f5. And it is very logical. I don't remember what we looked at, but we were not really critical um, and a bit over optimistic. So after bishop c8, I thought, okay, you know, uh, black is white is pawn uh, queen down, uh, piece down. So if if I play developing moves like bishop c4 or queen g6 check, somehow I made some uh, uh, calculations and I didn't like uh, my position so much. And of course, you know, the thing is, uh, finally I realized that the only chance to continue uh, my attack and the initiative uh, was to have my knight on f5. And that's the reason that is how I could find this move. It's a bit strange. Okay, obviously that would be much better to, to place the other rook to e1, but I, th I thought it was not, I was not in time. So after rook e1, okay, knight a6 is natural, and now I put my rook on e6. And again, the, the main idea is to, uh, the, it's, I realize it's more important 
all the, the exchange and the materials more important and I desperately needed my nylon F5. And of course, uh, I, the, the calculation I did of, of the, you know, that it's very interesting position. Um, the, the calculation more or less, during, what I did during the game, this, this for example here, something like this, that black is not able to take for the moment because then I give check and they I take. And this was more or less all I, all I could, uh, uh, could do. But, but that's all, also what he should have done, you know? Uh, and it's, white is not, it's just very unclear position and even now I, computer, uh, I don't remember finally when from time to time I put this position, it's very complex. But he made this mistake, obviously I have to take, and now black is in big trouble somehow, because it's not so easy to find a useful move, and black can almost never want to take. So he played b5 to distract uh, my bishop from the diagonal, but of course now somehow uh, the idea of the move bishop e7 is um, to, to prepare the taking on e6 and then of course somehow you close the diagonal but it just doesn't work uh, because here after taking I took it was not the best move but I think it was also good it's not dubious as uh, the comments uh, and check, it is, this is more or less what I, it's, this is something easy to calculate until now. So queen d4 is uh, only move, and then black tries to, black tries to uh, repeat the moves, but I was lucky to, that here white is much better, for example, in this ending. For, and it's a pawn up, of course. But so eventually, after knight f5, I could save my. I'm, white is pawn down, uh, pawn up, and white won. So I will not show the, all the game. So um, after winning this, next day I, I was very, very lucky against Mickey Adams, and from minus one I went to plus one. And eventually, I won the tournament, not without luck. So. Um, and that, but of course, the thing about uh, this game was that we knew that, um, for example, if black wants to avoid... Okay, first of all, this, the position is very unclear, so it's not like white refuted completely this line. And another thing was, uh, we knew this, uh, we knew it before the game that if black wanted to, to, to avoid uh, all these sharp lines, C5 immediately was uh, a bit more precise because, for example, uh, now knight G5 allows black knight to go to, to C6, so it's different. In, and if black takes, if white takes on C5, then bishop B7 and bishop D3. I think knight B7. And these games, uh, and it was played uh, later on. I, I believe. Let me just show me. Uh, yeah, for example, in the game of Malachatko, but I think C5 was later on played already several games by Grischuk and Magnus played also C5. The, the year after, you know, the year after, um, uh, it was, uh, my game against Anand was in 2005 and this is 2006. So, uh, again, I won a game, but it was not a, even not even close to a refutation of, um, of um, the Queen's Indian. So it was expected that uh, some four months later in St. Louis at the World Championship, Anand would repeat uh, again the Queen's Indian. So uh, of course, I, I, it's difficult to. I mean, you have to be naive to believe that um, that uh, to, it's possible to win uh, two times with the same uh, idea. And in this case, we went um, for this long, long, 
very old what tabia, you know. And here, okay, uh, there was just I think uh, I think there were many games already from the match from the first matches of Kasparov and Karpov. Uh, there were already many games in this line, and then Karpov Kamsky played also, and uh, here. B2, take, knight c5, knight c4. So take, and after queen g4, bishop g5, white would be winning if it was not for the move uh, knight d3. So uh, more or less, in, uh, there was this game of, I remembered Bakro, you know, that uh, I thought it was Bakro, some important game that he went for, uh, for, oops, sorry, bishop e5, and then put the pawn on c7, and then it was a question, but from what we uh, thought, it, this was kind of a mathematical draw. It looks very dangerous, but apparently black holds. It's not enough, uh, because white, all, black also pushes his pawns, and then uh, move by move, it looks like uh, black holes. So, uh, our idea was to play differently, um, and it's not better than the, I mean, it's simply new idea, it's not better than uh, what I did there. So it looked to us that, okay, black is exchanged down, white is exchanged down, but of course the bishop on d5 is very strong and obviously the pawn. So we thought that, okay, there was some, um, there was some uh, practical problems for black to, to play this. It looked like white had no, uh, no risk and it, it, it it was not so easy to defend with the black pieces. But first of all, okay, objectively the position is much closer to equality. It's dynamic, you know, it's not like, sim, um, let's say, they, what they call dynamic e equality. And Anand, very quickly again, he made a good uh, reaction. H5, the idea of the move H5 is to, uh, because at some positions, um, the queen might go to um, to g4, and of course it's also good to free, uh, to to stop uh, white's pawn to h5. You know, uh, so okay, nothing really happened. For example, I guess uh, mm, I I was more or less. For example, here. Uh, I can't play bishop f4 because bishop f5, uh, e5, f e5, but okay, we were more or less doing nothing, and I, I would say black equalized, so here, for example, if I take, black takes on c6, you know, and then it becomes pretty much equal. Uh, so that was not my intention, but, f and, you know, uh, now I took, and I, I took also this pawn, so again, situation is uh, pretty equal. Um, rook a6, you know, and uh, I would say it's, it's not a brilliant game, but the, the, the quality was quite high. I mean, not so, also no mistake. And here, I think he made started to make some mistakes, and especially here, uh, Queen A7 was very, very big uh, blunder, because after Queen D3, I'm attacking both uh, on G6 and on D5, and Black is already in big trouble, not only because he, White is uh, returning, uh, winning an exchange, but somehow, for example, if Black plays King G7. Um, then I can push my pawn, pawn on A4, you know. And otherwise, that would probably not be such a uh, so easy to win. But with after, for example, in this position, uh, let's say after King G7, if I take take A4, uh, 
some, even some of the uh, opposite square uh, endings, if in, let's say after queen d4, that could be lost. And it is probably lost because I, white is able to create two, pawn, two pass pawns, one on this side and the other on h. So uh, white would be able to, you know, to advance his king and then black has to keep um, the defense of uh, uh, this flank. So, and also uh, this pawn is uh, almost useless. So again, um, after this, uh, here I was completely winning and I missed, but I was too completely winning and I missed, but still, you know, I didn't feel so um, unhappy because uh, it was the second round and uh, it was important obviously because I considered Anand to be the favorite, okay, my main rival for San Luis. Uh, for the World Championship, but but then because the game was so long and I'm a bit younger, I thought it was you know f uh, the, the, like okay like the outcome fine the final outcome was not so bad. I mean uh, for long event like uh, World Championship match, uh, World Championship, then it was 14 rounds. You know I thought it was um, uh, the one the, the younger players have more, some advantage, and um, and long games eventually would uh, benefit me. Um, okay, that was in September 2005, and then next year, I think I was playing E4. We didn't play so many games in the year 2006, and I think I both, both games I played E4, I lost badly in Sofia with White. Anand was playing, I, I think he was playing uh, the Marshal, and okay, in that case it was, uh, the, I was avoiding the um, Marshal variation of the Spanish. Uh, um, and then in 2007, again in January, um, we played the Queen's Indian again. Mm, so, So this time I didn't play knight c3, so we went for uh, a game for this line. And it's very strange because honestly I don't remember what my idea was to play if he repeated. Uh, I just, I don't think, and I don't think I would have repeated what I did in San Luis, but at the same time, uh, if, if I had any idea, I don't think that would be a big deal. You know. So, but this time he, uh, he, he was the first to uh, deviate by knight f6. So, here after e4 taking, because, uh, for example, the move b5, it was, I, if I'm not wrong, it's Anand uh, himself that won good game against Adams by very typical sacrificing uh, it's a very typical sacrifice and then take and then he won a good game with the white I think he took with the bishop and then the idea is to advance the pawns it is very typical um, sacrifice and he uh, he won that game and eventually I think white white is better in this kind of positions so um, he took, uh, in that, okay, D takes, and I played A4. Okay, so my idea is to stop the move B5, and immediately he played Knight D5, I took, he took, D6, otherwise I think white would be even worse, you know. Uh, take, take, this is kind of forced, and here black has to uh, defend his pawn. And I, uh, I, I didn't really expect uh, exactly this line in Vaikanze because uh, I couldn't really remember my preparation because it was like around six months before I looked at this line and uh, it happened. So 
I, 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 I remember there was some Indian player involved, but after the game, when I had to comment, I, I think I said some, maybe it was Ganguly what I said. I, I thought uh, that it was uh, Ganguly was playing with the black pieces, but it was in fact the game um, Sasikirian playing white against um, Motilev uh, with the black pieces. And I remembered we had some something, you know, but couldn't really, uh, I couldn't really remember what our preparation was for this line, but there was something that we didn't like uh, uh, for black. And I'm very proud, I, could, I couldn't remember, but I was able to find the best move, which is B4. So the, the idea of this, B, the, this move is that uh, if white, for example, plays the natural move queen e2, black plays c5, and when this pawn is exchanged, for example, then uh, sometimes the b3 pawn is weaker. So my idea was that to, you know, that after the b4, that every time that black plays c5, then I take my, with the d pawn, and I already create my pass pawn, you know. So it is a huge improvement uh, for white to have the pawn on b5 and not on b3, you know, because it's not attacked and you can, and of course it also gives a ver perfect square for the knight on c4. So, and here, after b4, I was just looking now, uh, uh, because from, from time to time I look, uh, what, how computer improve, you know, and sometimes they, uh, show good ideas, but back then I think uh, uh, it's, I don't know which was then the best uh, com uh, computer engine, but it was not really showing this move. Uh, I guess otherwise Anand would have known it. And okay, so uh, what happened in the game that he played uh, queen d7, queen, and putting the queen on d5, so now it looks like uh, black has two pawns for, you know, uh, and should be fine. But at the same time, position is really uh, passive because rooks are much, somehow, they are in a situation only to defend, but they're not active. So, and of course, uh, it's not so easy for black to find, to have, to, um, create counterplay. Every time he tries to open the f-file, I would always respond with f4, with g4, and that this pawn would become weak. So, okay, h6 is, uh, and of course, for example, a5, uh, uh, this pawn is weak again, and of course, the, the pawn on e6 is weak, and I have perfect squares. So h6 looks the typical useful move. So I attacked rook e8, and I moved my queen to c2 with the idea to, you know, to put my rook on e5. Um, so now, um, rook d8, the, it looks like black plays all the natural moves, but suddenly his position became very critical after queen d2, and, and it's, also, uh, it, it's also true that um, the problem is that black is passive. And white has many, many useful moves. I can put my pawn on h4, for example, you know, to always, for forever, forever stop the move uh, g5. I can place my, uh, put my bishop on um, f4, maybe then e5, and then try to put my knight on f4. And it's perfect coordination for white, my white pieces. So queen d7 back. I made a useful move, just a waiting move, because I didn't want my uh, king on the light square, just in case, you know. Uh, and bishop f4, he, he was, Anand was just waiting, and I was improving. And uh, so, t this, during the lunch, uh, today we spoke a bit about in, uh, Nimtsovich and uh, something, some of uh, 
uh, about the overprotection or I don't know, prophylactic. So in fact, A5 is not really a big, uh, a good, uh, uh, good move always because it creates uh, a weakness for the pawn on E5. But what would be very good for Black, if it was possible, was to exchange one pair of rooks. Then the White's advantage would be much, much. Uh, smaller than, than now. So immediately I stopped this. And I think it was not even the best move by the computer, but it looked like the most, uh, uh, how to say, psychologically, the, the most unpleasant move for my opponent, because uh, it's like saying, uh, forget about this move, about changing the rooks and playing a5. So after rook a8, I improve again my position. I'm not sure about this move because sometimes uh, there was some small tactical idea with b5, and maybe I don't remember if it was c5. So maybe it was not in this position. Bishop c3, queen d6, and now again I uh, tried to I tried to already improve the the position of this. My, my knight, so knight d3, knight f4 is coming, and then of course uh, the pawn would be hanging. So it's obvious that um, black cannot simply wait. He played b5, queen c5, and now after queen d8, I played knight d3 and he resigned, but I think it was clearly pr premature. White is better, but uh, uh, I don't think it is completely over, and uh, I've seen uh, many turnarounds in different in all through my life. But it's also true that uh, it is disgusting to play these kind of positions. So it was a big, big win for me. Uh, in it was in 2007, uh, in in January, and then a couple of uh, like in in a month. We played a game in Linares. Okay, it was play this game. I think was played in in Mexico. The the first part of the Linares tournament. Then it was taken played in Mexico. I think Chucky was also there. Uh, so so we repeated the same. And honestly, uh, what happened in Vikernze that after you know um, after I I played a4, you know. And uh, knight d5. After taking, I told Vishu, but you know, you could just take, and it looks very, very good for you know for black, because if, for example, white, okay, white has to play rook e1, rook c8, and then uh, rook c1 is not possible because um, of bishop a3 and bishop d3. So I have to, I said I have to play like this, and it looks very good. Black has two pawns. Like for example, bishop b4, and then black wants to play f5 or queen g5, and looks really strong compensation. I even thought it looked to me that black is even better. So this morning I checked, and in fact I was completely wrong because there are two moves. First of all, here white can exchange the bishops, but even stronger is if white plays. Okay, it's a computer move, it looks ugly, but it's also true that white is um, exchange uh, a piece up. So knight b1 regroups, and I in the future I, I can put my knight on c3 after bishop d2, and, and looks like white is better. So honestly, what was Vicious idea after a4 here, I don't remember, but Probably because it, we didn't evaluate both correctly, uh, I, I didn't repeat the move a4. And uh, this morning I looked a bit and it looks like white is slightly better. I don't know, maybe he had some very de deep idea. But in that case I took, which is also a good idea, good move. And after b5, for example, now there are, uh, you know, there are new games with knight c5, which looks very natural, and this. So, for example, here, if uh, if black, I think there's been game games with queen d3, and I think queen e5. So there are new ideas for white. So I don't really like this idea with knight f6 and taking for black. 
but in the game, uh, in the in in the game in Mor Morelia, it was very quiet game. Uh, for example, here it looked to me. I think that was kind of preparation. We believe that white is has some advantage, but it turned out not so much somehow. Maybe I didn't play precisely. So uh, it was very um, equal game then. Okay, it went like this, and then here it was a draw. So that was in 2007, and then in 2008, I think I was also playing some games, first move against e4, but the crucial thing happened that in the, in, in the summer with my, what is that, my, my wife, <laughs> She was then my girlfriend, we went to Mallorca, and then uh, Paco Vallejo, he was helping me. So it was not really a big training session in the morning. We were, I was working a bit with him, and then, uh, and then afternoon we were going for the beach. It was, not, it was very light, like around a week, and like half holidays and half uh, work. But the most important thing is one morning he... Uh, he worked in the night and uh, he told me, I think I found a very good idea. So what happened that was Anand, uh, for example, uh, and that was in, I think it was in August, and then we had the final of Grand Slam in Bilbao. Uh, in, at the beginning of September, I think Ivan Chuk also played. And, uh, and then again it was Queen's Indian, but this time, I, I played um, the move Queen C2, which, in fact, it was Vallejo who made it popular. I think it was in Torino 2006, if I'm not wrong. And the idea is a brand, completely new idea to sacrifice a pawn. And it is very, very dangerous. Um, and I think Anand, what happened was that he played in Bilbao. And immediately after, uh, already as a world champion, he had to defend his title in Bonn immediately after the match. So it was obvious that, in a way, he was hiding his um, best uh, preparation. And he was not paying attention maybe to, to this. And um, so the thing is that uh, after Queen C2, uh, the, the idea of Paco Vallejo was that White sacrifices a pawn for an initiative. And now the, there are so many years after, I think finally, Black found how to, to defend, but there are many tries for White and Black has to know exactly what to do. So, okay, uh, Bishop's e7 can be a bad move. So now, uh, castling is losing immediately because of Queen e4. So. White has, black has to play either, I think, move the knight or queen c8 to protect the bishop, and I, I think also knight c6. So queen c8 then was popular, and it was considered like the, the best move because uh, after, for example, e4, white could, black could go to c7, and after, but, but after uh, a3, Black was going to c6, and now there was some game uh, after uh, knight c3, d5, here, here, and, and then eventually Black was holding. So what finally Paco Vallejo found was that if instead of first knight c3, Black, black uh, White plays bishop g5, then Black wouldn't be able to to, to take on f6 with the knight. See, he doesn't have time for the move uh, knight bd7. So after knight g5, d5, knight c3, uh, okay, um, I'm threatening to uh, recover my pawn with an advantage. And d4 is not, is a mistake because I think of the move queen b5, and if the queen goes to the d8 file, uh, th there was something like knight d4, something like this. Knight takes d4, bishop g2, and knight e6. Or, so, so it is natural that black takes. And of course, 
this was, if I'm not uh, wrong, also E4 sometimes was very strong. So taking is natural, and for example, this uh, also gives some advantage to white because of my uh, bone structure and somehow the uh, black king is a bit weak. I have many options, and but even if even without kingside initiative, white has the D file and some positional advantage. So. Um, Knight a6 looked uh, better than, than castle, immediate castle because uh, uh, the knight on h4 is not as good as on g5 somehow. Uh, for example, here I kind of also recover. I don't like uh, the comments of Bosnia, obviously. But, okay, g6 is almost, you know, uh, the very typical defense and we all know that uh, the knights on f5 are uh, very dangerous, so you better uh, stop, prevent it. Take, take, castle, but again, here I have uh, some positional advantage and I control the d-file. So, knight c7 looks very logical also because uh, uh, the, it's obvious that the knight is not so well placed on a6 and queen d7, knight e6 and I played the natural move, queen e4. So, um, black has problems uh, to, with, a bit with coordination, and again, it's, um, it is, uh, the, the, sometimes the pawn structure, it is sometimes the initiative, and sometimes it is that, uh, um, even the endings could be worse. And of course, the biggest problem of uh, Black's problem is the um, the D file. Um, because, for example, rook D8, it's not possible because I take it, my queen goes to E8 with check or to E7. So, so uh, queen E8 is a mistake because I think here uh, what what was Anand's idea was to play knight d4, and this is what I considered as best defense. But then, after the game, he was he told me, and he was right, that he considered this position as lost. But maybe still, it would be it was a, a better option because, as we know, some white has a very good initiative and white dominates uh, the d file. But uh, at the same time, I have very bad bone, bone structure. So even and also, um, it is also true that uh, many rook endings are drawn even with some pawns down. So again, white is much better. But I think it was uh, a better option for black compared to what happened in the game because the, after the move c4. Uh, it, I played a natural move queen h4, and then I don't. I, I mean, I could have taken, and it's probably also very good, uh, a clear pawn. But I thought queen h4 was even stronger, as as for example here, uh, I want to play rook. Uh, white wants to play rook e7 and sometimes double. So knight c5, rook e7, and then uh, he played rook d8, which was but I, but already. Black is in big trouble because, for example, as it happened uh, after rook d8, I just move my rook and then he has to move his queen and, for example, to c6. But the problem is that uh, this pawn is very important and black is not able to take on f7 because I'm winning the, 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 the rook on d8. So he resigned. Uh, and it was a, um, you know, a big blow for him. So eventually I won, uh, and this was in 2008. And since then, uh, he's played very, very few games with the Queen's Indian. You know, and it's not like I wouldn't say it's uh, right kind of refuted that line. But apparently, after this game, he didn't like it so much anymore. Uh, but uh, again, it was very interesting what happened in Bilbao because 
I think first, uh, the second round maybe, um, I played against uh, Chucky uh, and it was uh, some game in the Nimtsovich. I don't, I'm not sure if it was the second round, uh, in, but it, the thing is that uh, in this line, you know, uh, I was black, so we went uh, to this ending and it was a draw. Uh, and then, of course, I played uh, also with Anand. It was a round robin. We, we, I won that game with White in the Queen's Indian, and with Black he played uh, something very simple. I played Karokan, and it was a uh, equal game, and we exchanged many pieces. It was a draw. But what happened was that, um, for example, it turned out that Anand had a very good idea here for White but he needed it for the World Championship match in Bonn and uh, it was something like this and uh, I don't know if it was uh, e th e th something like this and then Bishop D2 and then he played uh, or maybe it was first Bishop D2 and then he played H3 which was then a new move uh, let me just see, I'm not uh, sure and exactly and he, and then it was a new move, h3, and it was a uh, very uh, strong idea, and finally, uh, I don't think, I think he didn't win that game, but he was uh, very close to winning it. So what I'm saying that he simply kept that idea for, uh, for the World Championship match, and in a way, I don't know what, what would have happened if he played it in Bilbao against uh, me, but uh, sometimes you realize how lucky uh, you are when, uh, because, uh, because uh, your opponent needs his best ideas for more important events. Um, I'm sure, Vesin, you would be happy to take some questions from the audience, yeah? On anything that Vesin has shown us tonight, or perhaps on another subject uh, that he hasn't touched on yet. So, put your hand up and I'll give you the microphone. Maybe who would like to ask Vesin a question? Don't be shy. Come on, there must be some questions. Uh, just about his career or anything? Someone? Huh? No, no one in the room wants to ask Vesin a question. No? Paul! Come on, have yeah. you? My old friend Paul. Paul! When you're playing at your level, which player frightens you the most? Which players are you afraid of, Wesley? Well, actually I don't, I don't care anymore at all, but... Um, well, now... Obvious, it's very obvious that um, Magnus is uh, for the moment the strongest, but um, all through my career I think uh, the, one of the problems was sometimes that when you play someone what, what, with Kasparov and um, you, with the black pieces, you just, I mean he was so creative. Um, you just didn't know what to expect. I mean, and sometimes uh, the, the 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 problem was just to 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 get to to to, to survive the opening, uh, you know. Uh, and now it's easier. I think now what Magnus does is even more difficult because uh, he doesn't win so many games as Kasparov did. Uh, was winning. He was not getting. He's not getting so many advantages uh, compared to Kasparov right at the opening. And he wins his games later, and it's. Uh, I think uh, reserves. Uh, he deserves a lot of credit for that. But of course, yeah. I mean, all these guys. They are very good. Uh, it's difficult to say. Thank you. Anyone? Another question? The best thing? Sure. Hello. Um, I read an article recently um, 
in which Carlson in New and Chess was explaining how Alpha Zero had changed his style a little bit. I think he was saying that, I'm not sure, I haven't read it properly actually. <laughs> it, has Alpha Zero had any effect on your games or any other Grandmasters games that you know of? Alpha Zero, Vestin, what do you think about Alpha Zero's effect on, on Magnus and on Chess? Uh, honestly, I've never, I never worked with Alpha Zero. I, I also only one that, that famous game. It was also a Queen's Indian, uh, uh, of the, for the match of Alpha Zero against uh, Stockfish. But it didn't really. I mean, it's for, from my perspective, uh, it doesn't change anything. I mean, I, I don't think uh, it can be such a big. Uh, Style, style difference between uh, Alpha Zero and he, he, even in that game, my impression was that uh, that Stockfish. The reason uh, Stockfish lost was because probably there was some. They reached a position when it looked like three moves or four. Well, two or three moves were equal. So uh, uh, Stockfish was because they were. I think the rules were that every four minutes they had to make a move. Probably with more time, even Stockfish would have realized that it, there was a difference between the, 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 the options. And, but uh, the level was kind of... It looked, it looked to me that Stockfish was uh, resisting, but uh, it was maybe some, a bit worse. But I couldn't see a big, big difference, honestly, in that game. But I, I mean, it's from a human perspective of view. I just don't see uh, the difference between someone, some computer that plays uh, three, like 4,000 rating or 4,500. For me, it's all, I just don't see the big difference. Uh, and when we prepare, you know. Uh, it's a matter of sometimes of seconds. If I have my this laptop, which is from 2012, I don't think it's uh, you find many, many more bad, big ideas with some stronger computer. It's just a matter of some seconds in most of the situations. Maybe it matters in it makes a difference in some very, very complicated positions. But I don't think I, uh, my impression they're beyond humans' uh, capacity. Um, so. I, I don't think it's a big difference, honestly. But again, I have never tried to, to work with Alpha Zero, and I didn't even know it was possible. Actually, I'd like to ask you. A I'd like to ask Vincent a question on the on the back of that question, uh, from the modern to the past. In your career, uh, how much time, or uh, have you spent much time studying the games of the old masters, the classic games of the past, and, and what can you say to the audience today about the value? Of looking at games of Aliekin, Capablanca, or Botvinnik, and you know the players of the past. No, as a kid, obviously, I, I did read all these books, but not that uh, profound uh, studying the books because uh, it, I, I'm sure that now uh, the, the modern games in the modern tournaments they've been also a very good example of uh, uh, model games, you know. But again, I've repeated during the seminar the differences that in the past uh, there were many games where uh, there were many games where uh, one of the players was not really putting a good resistance, and that is the reason that all these plans are very visible in a game. But nowadays, uh, if you want to put your uh, all your pieces on the best squares, I don't think uh, your opponent will let you so easily like it was in the, pa in the past games. And that is the reason uh, uh, people say this is a classical game, because uh, there was not so good resistance, I believe, you know. Uh, but uh, again, I, I think there are now there are very good games, you know, and they, you can see the, all the plans. Um, strategical ideas there and in modern games as well but it's also true that for example in imagine a blitz world championship nobody wrote a book and maybe there are good games there but they, we have these uh, books like Suri, uh, the Bronstein book you know and uh, uh, 
probably several more, but I, honestly I'm not a specialist uh, in this question because for many, many years I just don't buy books and <laughs> really uh, I am not really a specialist. But uh, of course as a kid I did buy uh, I, and I read my system of Mimsovich, but I don't, honestly, I don't remember much. Um, one, or, one or two more questions, maybe? Anyone else? Uh, right here. Yeah. Uh, sure. Okay, good day. I want to find out what's the best way of improvement, what do you need to work on, and how do you try to improve? How do you train to improve chess and what can you give us a few quick tips on how to improve one's chess? Well, well it's not a secret, but one thing uh, I would say that now my impression is that the trend is that every time uh, the tournament will be quicker and quicker with shorter time control. And I don't think it's very possible, so easy to, you know, to make a big difference in the opening. I don't, I mean, the... The first 10 to 15 moves, they are more, more or less the same uh, for everyone. So, clearly, uh, a good way to improve and to make a difference uh, is to, to be very good in endings, to, to memorize, uh, you know, um, the theoretical ending as long as it's possible. As, and, of course, all this training, uh, especially calculation, should be more important because 80 percent of the games are decided by or maybe more i mean it doesn't really matter exactly the the percentage are decided by tactical mistakes so if you have uh, if you can um, if you're very good in calculations even if you're worse then uh, and but you defend correctly I, it's not so easy to to win and, uh, but of course that has to be uh, combined with good uh, physical condition because uh, our brain, it's not like this, it's not linear, it goes like this. Uh, so so is, if we are able to, to be stable, you know, to have a, a high, uh, high level, uh, average level, that would be good, but calculation and ending Quick calculation and knowing the basic theoretical endings, let's say several hundred positions maybe, and to, 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 to know to play them quickly, not only to know them, but to, to remember them quickly, I, I believe it's very important now for, for practical reasons. Thank you, Vesson. Priscilla, you had a question? Okay, um, yeah. so, uh, what are your views on chess uh, 950? To get over the... Uh, 960, no? 960, sorry. Uh, chess 950, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it? No, it, also, it makes all the sense. I don't think it will replace for, for the near future, you know, the, um, the normal chess. But it's, it makes all the sense because, uh, you know, you start thinking from move one or two. Uh, and, but of course, computers, they would be even stronger uh, compared to humans. Because in normal chess, we, uh, with the normal setup, uh, at least we can put a resistance in the, in the, in the opening. Uh, because we've studied and uh, we, we know many typical positions. But I think in our, uh, a match of uh, between human and the computer in 960 would be almost uh, like 100% uh, win for black, for, for the computer, and also much quicker than in normal games, but that's not the point. It makes, it makes, uh, it, it, we, I played with Gary and I played with Wesley So, and it is very big fun, I like it, but the only problem is that some positions are, I think that, uh, there was one position when it looked to me from um, White Hat initially very big advantage for some reason. You know, it's always symmetrical, but my impression was that White was uh, uh, much better from the initial position, you know. But uh, I, I, I honestly like it. Uh, so 
you like the chess note 16? Yeah, but it's very difficult. Another question here. Uh, hi. So this is uh, with regards to your previous answer uh, with being tactically alert during games. So do you have a routine or regimen that you follow just before the round on how to stay tactically alert during the game? Like, would you have some advice on how to stay on top of the tactical part of it? It is, it is training, uh, but of course, uh, uh, honestly, you, you're asking me in the wrong moment because uh, I'm not training anymore. <laughs> you know, I'm not really trying to improve uh, my, my chess now, but... but, uh, but um, Inspiring chess players, do you have any advice on how they should be before the round? Well, uh, I, I, I believe that you should, because we don't know how long the game will take in this, to, for example, tomorrow when we start, you don't know if it will take two hours or five hours. So you have to be used to save energy, you know, uh, and maybe not get distracted too much, concentrate before the game, not spend too much energy. Uh, and about critical moments, I would say that uh, uh, not almost almost always uh, spending over half an hour is a mistake. I don't think it can be a good idea. But uh, uh, the critical moments are, for example, when you have to, it's a matter of very precise calculation uh, about some, when you have two options, or for example, when you have to uh, play sharply and to risk or to change the pieces, imagine, and make a draw, for example. That's when, and this, when the, the game is really decided, but sometimes there's, honestly, it doesn't make a big difference if you put your rook on C1 or D1. Uh, if, uh, and it's not worth to, to spend so much time on it. You ha and time travels, in my case, it's always, always been a mistake. But, um, and of course, the difference is, uh, during the seminar I've been saying that it's a, a bit different uh, when you train all these uh, position studies and uh, co calculation study is that when you, you train and you have some position, you have to solve at home, at home you know there is a solution for the study, but over the board you, you're not sure, you don't know if it's winning, it, it, but of course training is good because these typical uh, sacrifices and stalemate studies, of course, you, 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 um, if, you decide, if you solve many of them, of course it is useful, but over the board it's different. And it's also, uh, it's also true that um, when we train at home, many times we have the ideal situation. When you, when you, if you're tired, you can take a rest. You can, you know. But all, many times you play and in a time travel in the last round of the last day of the tournament, where you, uh, on the sixth hours, uh, hour, and you're very, very really tired. So competitive chess is different from the training. Uh, but uh, again, I be, I believe that also one has to to be to try all. I mean, even. Even when um, you train at home and there's the neighbor has the, the radio, you can have this situation also during the tournament. So uh, it's not so bad. It's never uh, perfect in, in, in life. Maybe the last question, sir, yeah, because thank you very much for listening. Bobby Fischer, Nani Kasparov, and Carlos, and Magnus Carlos, and where in the each top, what, we, what do you think, how you evaluate the order between them after a series of several games, one against the other? You heard the same? Yeah, I don't think this question. Uh, has an answer, but I would say it also depends when they played. If you meet, uh, imagine Kasparov and with Magnus in the 80s, I would rather take Kasparov because he was really creative and uh, 
over Magnus, he would have some quite serious uh, advantage in the opening. But with computers now uh, on the tw in the 21st century, uh, because now you can you don't really you know um, uh, make you, you can't really make a difference in the first 15 moves or, or sometimes even 20, things would be completely different because Magnus he is very very stable. He has maybe he's not as creative as Gary, but also he's probably more stable and he's. Um, his uh, ending uh, technique is probably better and let's say his calculation and dynamic is maybe not as good but also let's say uh, if they have to calculate uh, short lines Magnus was almost makes no mistake but if they have to calculate imagine 10 lines line maybe then Gary will be more dynamic but it's difficult to say because first of all it's, it's totally impossible to compare and uh, I can speak more about Fisher, uh, about Magnus and Gary because I've, I've played them, but Fisher, uh, he stopped when I was born. So I've seen his games, but uh, they were all brilliant. But again, uh, we all now see what Magnus is doing, it's really impressive. But Gary's been watched uh, number one on rating, I think, for 20 years, and so far Magnus is halfway. But of course he's young, I mean he's uh, around 30 now, so probably he will get close, you know. Uh, but again, it's very difficult to compare. And I don't like this comparison. Okay, let's give a round of applause to our